Okay, so we're gonna quickly cover the user interface. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is just hide the left side of our screen. If you notice on the left side, there's this file, tool, mesh, layers, a lot of options and preferences that we can go ahead and adjust. I'm really gonna get to, but for now, let's go ahead and just cover the main viewport and kind of what kind of access for the active tools we have while we're sculpting. So to get rid of the left side of the screen to hide it, on the bottom left, kind of middle of the screen, you'll see a little arrow pointing to the left. If I tap that, it will go ahead and hide the screen. If I go ahead and tap it again, it'll bring it out. For now, we're gonna go ahead and hide it. So with the hidden, what you notice is that we have a left kind of toolbar menu. We have our brushes to the right side of the screen. We can alternate our brushes here on the right side. At the bottom, we have undo, and we have some viewport settings like we previously covered. This is just kind of viewport controls and how you want to view your model. I'm going to leave it on shaded. I'll leave the grid on for now. The left side of the screen, this topmost button here, is our active tool. So if I switch to my standard brush, you'll notice that tool changes. If I switch to my clay brush, that tool changes. Right below it, we have options for alphas. So if we want to go ahead and start to detail, um, kind of tertiary detail at a later, later phase, you know, the end phase of sculpting, you can kind of add some alphas in and start to alpha in some scales or different bolts or different things on your sculpt. This is just a brush alpha. Right below that, we have our symmetry. So we can turn symmetry on, we can turn it off. Um, you're also able to access different um, variables of symmetry. So you can have Z symmetry, Y symmetry, X symmetry, typically for quick studies and thumbnails and just like quick active pieces that I want to get out of the iPad and into kind of my ZBrush package. I just leave symmetry on X. I don't like to play with it. If I want to play with that kind of deep of symmetry, I go into the 3D software on my PC, on my computer. This is just more for quick ideas and thumbnailing and you know, on the go. And so for this use case, I like to just keep it simple and just leave it X symmetry. On the left side of the screen is going to be the size of my brush, the bright, this first slider here. Who knows when I move it up, my brush gets bigger. When I move it down, it gets smaller. Right below that is going to be my fall off. Now you're not seeing anything change here, but it's either it's like the fall off and brush strength. And so it's how hard the brush overall is when I click and kind of drag the sculpt. If I go to my move brush really quick and I move this clay, you'll notice that this is kind of the amount that it's giving me. If I lower that strength, it's a softer amount of move. If I go high, I can move it really long. So that's gonna be my brush strength. To be fair, I would like it if they have a secondary viewport kind of UI showcasing the strength of the brush. If you notice in ZBrush, there's two reticles. There's one for your size, which is this one. And then they have a secondary internal reticle or circle viewport UI that when you click and drag it, it's like your focal shift. It's the hardness and softness of your brush. It'd be really nice if Forger eventually did add this in. I'm not sure if that's in their you know, workflow down the line or pipeline or you know, process map down the line for the tool, but if it's not, it'd just be a great feature to have. Um, but for now, if you go lower, we have some masking. So this kind of is our masking shortcut. We'll talk about masking a little bit further on, but it just allows you to activate and deactivate some of your masking that you're doing. You have your light shortcut. So if you click and hold this light, you can go ahead and start to rotate the lights. If I click and hold the light icon, and then I click in the viewport, I could rotate my light. So again, let's click and hold the light icon, and then you could rotate the light in the viewport with your right hand. The icon right below it is a smooth shortcut, so this just allows me to smooth the mesh with my brush. We'll cover that in a little bit more detail as we you know, begin sculpting and talk about certain brushes. It also allows you to snap. So if I'm moving in the viewport here with my right hand, I have, I'm moving in the viewport with my Apple Pencil. If I click and hold that, I could snap to 90 degree functions on my viewport. So if I wanna get you know a side view of this piece, I can click and drag with my Apple Pencil in the viewport, shift to snap. Right below that is my plus and minus. So that's my add or subtract. So just like in ZBrush or any kind of clay digital sculpting software, you can add clay. So if I go to my clay brush, maybe give myself a lower brush here and I start to sculpt on my model, it's adding clay. But if I click and hold the plus and minus sign, it's going to take away, so it starts to subtract clay. So that's my add and subtract button. Right below that is my navigation shortcut. 
Um, I don't really use it. I use the touch gesture controls. Um, it's just a different way of, you know, framing and kind of getting your objects together. And if you notice, there's a, two arrows in the middle of the screen at the bottom of the screen. That's undo. So if I tap the left one a couple of times, that undoes. If I tap the right one a couple of times, that kind of forwards the, the, the memory of the sculpt. So you can kind of undo your strokes or go forward again and, you know, get those strokes back. It's kind of your undo slider similar to ZBrush or any other sculpting software or 3D modeling package. You can go ahead and click this little bottom icon right next to the arrow that closes and opens the menu. There's a circle with a little kind of outward arrows that just frames your mesh. So you ever, if you're ever lost in space and you kind of you lose your object out in space, tap the little icon and it'll frame your object. Awesome. So with that, we went ahead and covered the general UI that you're going to be seeing while you're sculpting. If you don't have reference up and this is kind of what you want to see, this is the general UI. Again, you can turn off the grid here. When, we, when I sculpt, I turn off the grid once I kind of know where the front, back, and left and right is. Put some strokes down, turn off the grid, and you're good to go. So that's that. Let's go ahead and move on to the next lecture. Mm -hmm.